right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our regularly scheduled meeting of the Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee. I am Councilwoman Tracy Park, Chair of this committee. Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Park. Here. McOsker. Here. Soto Martinez. Here. Three members and a quorum, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. All right, we are now going to proceed to public comment for members of the public wishing to give general public comment or comment on specific items on today's agenda. I will go ahead and turn it over to our city clerk to provide the necessary information for the public to dial in and for our city attorney to explain the speaking rules to members of the public who are calling in. Uh, Mr. Clerk, would you please read the instructions to the public to dial in? Of course. Members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 1617696039 and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star 9 to request to speak. All right, thank you, Mr. City Attorney. <laughs> Sorry about that, my, my mic was turned off. Um, <laughs> members of the public calling in, when it is your turn to speak, please state which of the agenda items you would like to speak on. You have one minute per item to speak, two minutes total for multiple agenda items, and one minute for general public comment. We will tell you when your time is up. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. If you're making a general public comment, you must address topics in the jurisdiction of this committee. If you're not speaking on topic or we cannot tell whether you're speaking on a topic, you will get one brief warning from me or the chairman. And if you do not immediately get back on topic or again straight off topic, the chairman will cut you off and you will forfeit the rest of your speaking time. Finally, for members of the public calling in to speak, as soon as you hear someone address you, you are live in the committee meeting. If you're also listening to the meeting on your computer, channel 35 or other device, please turn down the volume on those devices immediately to avoid an echo. Thank you. All right, thank you to our city attorney, Mr. Hong. Uh, we are ready to go ahead and take public comment. So let's go ahead and bring in our first caller. All right, caller with the last four digits of 4398. Uh, can I? Yes. Uh, and get your name and the items you'd wish to speak on. Uh, my name is Michelle, and I wanted to uh, have something to say about the Lulu's place. Okay, you have one minute. Go ahead. My name is Michelle, and I am a graduate of St. Bernard, and I currently have a son attending St. Bernard. The opportunities that are being presented are very exciting. Lulu's place will offer so much to the St. Bernard community. The new sports facilities will help enhance what is already happening at St. Bernard. Although my son does not play sports, he is a computer science person. The opportunities that will arise from the Tiger Woods Center will be fantastic. My son and many others will greatly benefit from the programs provided. I am a fan of and supporter of Lulu's Place. All right, thank, thank you, you, Michelle. Next caller. Caller with the last four digits of 8196. If you could please unmute. Hi, this is George Mills from Latham and Watkins. We are pro bono, pro bono counsel for Lulu's Place. On behalf of the Kimmelman family, the sponsors of Lulu's Place, we appreciate your consideration of the lease between Lulu's Place and Los Angeles World Airport. And caller, which would, item would you like to speak on? Item one, lose this place. Thank you so much. You have one minute. Thank you. On behalf of the Kimmelman family, the sponsors of Lulu's Place, we appreciate your consideration of this lease between Lulu's Place and Los Angeles World Airport, which will allow this incredible facility to proceed. Lulu's Place is excited the opportunity to collaborate with the city and the community and our neighbor, the Archdiocese, to make this project a reality. Doug Kimmelman, together with Tiger Woods Foundation, USTA Foundation, and our sponsors, Cars Family Foundation, Rose Hills Foundation, Cedar and Sinai, 
Providence, Jersey Mike's, Disney, ESPN are committed to delivering these incredible facilities for the benefit of the community and the children of Los Angeles. We want to thank the mayor's office, the Board of Airport Commissioners, LAWA staff, and the community for helping to make this happen. We are committed to a continuing dialogue with the community to ensure this facility is something the city and LAWA can hold out as a shining star for Los Angeles. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, George. Next caller, please. Caller with the last four digits of 0514. If you could state your name and the items you'd wish to discuss. Hello, uh, my name is Jana, and I would like to speak on uh, item number one, please. All right, you have one minute. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm um, calling in to uh, also urge your support, uh, full support for Lulu's Place in the north side area. I'm a parent and a neighbor um, of kids in the Westchester area. I can actually see the proposed site for my backyard. I think it would be absolutely fantastic to take this fa fabulous gift that is being given to our community to help all students, uh, both for athletics and academics. I think that this is uh, something that we should champion and we should celebrate. And knowing that Lulu's Place wants to operate at the intersection of academics, athletics, and equity is really exciting in this day and age. And it will create some beautiful and amazing opportunities for students beyond just what their local schools can provide. Uh, I love the idea of the free programming that will be continued throughout, and I really uh, urge you to strongly consider your full support and um, strong push behind this because I think it will just add so much to our community. All right, Janet. thank you so much. You're out of time. Thank you so much for the comments. Uh, next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you would like to speak on. Yes, hi. Uh, item number one, Lulu's Place, John Rico. All right, you have one minute. Go ahead. Thank you very much. So I'm a parent in the local public schools. I'm a member of the Westchester community. I'm a youth coach and I'm an entertainment professional. Um, I fully support Lulu's Place as a location for recreation and tutoring service. Uh, as a parent, I think the community needs more fields um, for recreation and sports. As an entertainment professional, I think having outdoor space is instrumental in allowing people to explore their creativity and get outside for social and athletic purposes. And as a parent, I think we need more tutoring spaces in the local community where we don't have to drive far um, in order to serve our children and um, with additional um, educational possibilities. So. I just want to lend my support and I hope the council quickly approves Lulu's place. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rico. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you would like to speak on. Hi, this is Jim Evans. All right, what item would you like to speak on? I'd like to speak on item number one, Lulu's Place. All right, you have one minute, go ahead. As I stated, my name is Jim Evans. I'm a long-term resident of Westchester. Members of my family have lived in Westchester since 1954, well before homes were removed for LAX and Northside expansion. Family names include Evans, Gracie, Lambert, and Meyer Hopper. I'm also president of Westchester Delray Little League softball and t-ball program. We served the community since 1974 and have over 400 families engaged with our league. Even though Lulu's Place does not offer space for softball or t-ball, I'm voicing my support for the proposed plan to build outdoor recreation facilities and open space at LAX Northside. Fortunately, the facility will be open to the public and available for use by community and youth sports programs like AYSO Soccer. Having coached at Paseo Elementary School, Westchester Park, as well as served on the board at St. Bernard High School and Westchester Family YMCA, I'm an advocate for kids, our community and youth sports. Lulu's Place provides an excellent opportunity to build community and improve the quality of life for those who reside in the area. Please get Lulu's Place approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Uh, next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on.
Is there a caller there? We will move on to the next caller unless they are able to unmute. Just a reminder to those of you dialing in for the meeting, if you press, uh, you can press star nine to request to speak. We'll go ahead and take our next caller, please. I believe Hello? The, yeah, I believe the caller is unmuted. Great. If you could please state your name Hi. and the difference you'd like to speak on. Yes, um, my name is Rosie Roberts and I would like to speak on Lulu's place. All right, you have one minute, go ahead. Hello, I'm currently the principal at St. Bernard's High School and I've worked in at St. Bernard's going on for 28 years. The Lulu's Place project is an exciting one for the entire Westchester community. I'm excited about our families having access to the amazing parks, athletic facilities, and especially the learning opportunities. As an educator, I'm also extremely excited about the Tiger Woods Learning Center. This will be an amazing resource for all young people in the area and my students as well. This is the kind of learning resource that can change the lives and future academic trajectories of our young person by exposing them to hand-on relevant learning opportunities. I strongly support the Lulu's Place Project. Thank you. Rosie, thank you for your, your comments. We'll take our next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Minor press star six on mute. All right, let's move on to our next caller, please. Hi there. Sorry. Hi there. Hi. Uh, nope, you're you're Hi. here with us. Uh, can you tell us your name okay. and which item you'd like to speak on, please? Sure, this is Robert Ackerman, Vice President of the Alliance for Regional Pollution to Airport Congestion. I'd like to speak on item one, please. Hi, Robert. Go ahead. You have one minute. Thank you so much. Um, RSAC has submitted letters to LAWA and to this committee regarding certain legal issues uh, regarding the lease, and we'd like to, to have answers to those. Um, we're concerned about transparency and accountability because the lease allows for the CEO of LAWA to change lease boundaries, improve rates, and subleases, and it doesn't require going back to the Board of Airport Commissioners and uh, the City Council. So it, it doesn't allow for public participation if there's changes in those things. We also ask for law to have more, the same kind of robust community engagement they had when they updated the LAX Northside uh, EIR and plan in 2015. The public saw their input actually incorporated into the final project and they really like that and we'd like to see that again and i think that's important in terms of working with lulu's place in terms of developing the operating plan to have that same kind of robust uh, community engagement so we we ask that uh, that, that be done um, and we've requested that and some other things in the letters we've submitted we haven't taken a position on this project at the time at this time okay. it looks like a great opportunity M um, Mr. Ackerman, you're out of time. Thank you for your comments and we do have your letters. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you would like to speak on. Make sure you press star six to unmute. Greg DeLuga. And what items would you like to speak on? Uh, item one. All right, you have one minute. Go ahead. So I am uh, Greg DeLuga. I'm the regional commissioner for AYSO Region 7. I represent around 1,350 families in the Westchester area that uh, participate in our program every year. Um, we have been uh, working with the community for well over 30 years, trying to get additional field space for our many players. Um, and we are requesting that uh, Lulu's Place uh, come through and uh, get us an artificial turf field of at least 140 by 90 yards wide with lights, a bathroom that is available to youth sports between the hours of 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. weekdays and 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. at weekends. Uh, for over 30 years, our community has been promised field space around uh, after those uh, houses were removed. And if I do not, as a youth leader, uh, protect that right, uh, we'll be uh, 
I will be not well liked in the community. So please uh, work with our community in order to get this uh, wonderful opportunity up and going for our youth. All right, Greg, thank you so much for your comments. Next caller, please. And to those of you in the queue, you can press star nine to request to speak. Next caller. Call a reminder to press star six on mute and please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Can you hear me? Yes. Can. My name is Robert Sesato. I'm speaking on item number one. All right, President you have one CEO. minute, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, President CEO of Community Build, a legacy nonprofit of over 30 years servicing young people throughout Los Angeles. And I urge you to support this wonderful opportunity at Lulu's Place. I'm, I'm grateful that you all are thinking to put children and families first as we move forward to a world-class opportunity for the citizens of Los Angeles. Thank you very much. All right, thank you for your comments, Robert. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name, the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Richard Sims. I want to talk on, uh, speak on item one, Lulu's Place. All right, Richard, you have one minute. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, as I said, my name is Richard Sims. I've been a Los Angeles resident my entire life and I've been local to the Westchester area for the last 25 years. I've also worked in special education and currently work in the nonprofit youth sports community, um, which I've also been doing for the last 25 years. I am a huge supporter of Lulu's Place. The city of Los Angeles and the local community are desperate for more open green space for children to play. There's simply not enough space and the location is ideal. It seems like a dream that we have an organization willing to give us such a generous and incredible gift. This gift delivers on a promise to bring something we have been searching for for many years. I'm hopeful the council will allow this project to move forward. We could not ask for a better opportunity to help our youth, a place to play and a place to learn. Thank you. All right, Richard, thank you for the comments. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hello, my name is Casey Wilson, and I'm here to speak on item number one, Lulu's Place. All right, you have one minute. Go ahead. Um, thank you for having us all here today. I am the director of Evolution Sports, and I run programs for TK through 8 at Wish Community School. I am also the athletic director at Wish Academy High School, and I also run a volleyball club program in this community. I'm here uh, today in support of the Lulu's Place project. As someone who has started many programs in the community, including a high school, I can honestly say that the biggest hindrance that we face is facility space for our students. After learning about Lulu's Place, I believe this project will address the need for more sports facilities and recreational space for our community. This current plan for Lulu's Place shows multiple soccer fields, tennis courts, volleyball courts, pickleball courts, running trails. Best of all, this facility will be open to the public and available for use by our community sports programs and school groups. This project would remove so many obstacles and ensure many more kids get the access and opportunity to organize sports that everyone deserves to have. So I please urge everyone to give Lulu's Place their approval and thank you for having us today. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Next caller, please. Caller, please state. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Nick Pishka. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, um, I'm calling in support of Lulu's Place. I'm the scheduler for uh, ASO Soccer Region 7 in Westchester. All right, uh, my job is go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm calling um, in support of Lulu's Place. I'm the scheduler for ASO Region 7 in Westchester. My job is to schedule games on weekends and also schedule practices in the uh, evenings. And I'm basically using every square inch that we currently have to uh, schedule our games from as, as early as seven in the morning till as late as we can at night. Uh, we desperately need more space, not just for uh, games, but also for practices. Um, and uh, right now, currently, our practice spaces are, are very small. Soccer, we need a, a decent amount of space. So I'm just urging everyone to support Lulu's Place. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hello, my name is John Lucerarian, and I'd like to speak on item one. All right, you have one minute, go ahead. Hello everyone, my name is John Lucerarian. I'm the executive director of the Westchester Family YMCA. 
Uh, our board uh, leadership has had the pleasure of meeting with the Lulu's Place team uh, over the past couple of months. Having recently conducted a community needs assessment in our service area, based on our learnings, we believe the vision for Lulu's Place is in good alignment to meet those needs. We fully support the project and when approved, look forward to partnering with Lulu's Place team and supporting our collective impact in the lives of our youth and families. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, John. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Caller, you need to press star six to unmute. Hello, can you hear me? We can. John, oh, hello there. I'd like to speak on uh, item number one. Okay, what's your name? My name is Jerome Jones. All right, Jerome, you have one minute. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I am in full support of Lulu's Place, and, uh, and I would urge the support uh, of you as well. Um, I started uh, playing tennis at Westchester Park in the early 70s at a tennis program called Westchester Teen Tennis. Um, Lulu's Place is about opportunity. I had opportunity back then, um, and I was able to excel to a point to, to a college scholarship and play professional tennis, but it's all because I had opportunity. There aren't as many opportunities nowadays uh, in the area. And uh, this would be a boon, not only recreationally, but educationally to the kids in the, uh, in the Playa del, in the Playa del Rey, Westchester, Culver City, and all the surrounding communities. Uh, so I am in full favor of uh, Lulu's place. And I truly hope that this, um, this site uh, becomes a reality. Thank you. All right, Jerome, thank you for your comments. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you would like to speak on. Hi, my name is Allison Macbeth Featherstone. I'd like to speak on item number one. You have one minute. Go ahead. Awesome. I am the vice president of the Park Mesa Heights Community Council, but today I'm calling in as a South Los Angeles stakeholder. I urge you to support Lulu's Place. The program will not only help the children of Westchester, but the underserved children of South Los Angeles as well. I look forward to the academic and athletic progress the children will make from this facility. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Caller, Hello, press. my name is, yes, Go ahead. I'd like to speak on one. All right, what was your name? Gregory Power. All right, Gregory, you have one minute. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, I've been a Westchester resident, well, I've been a Playa Vista resident since 2004, actually 2003, now that I think about it. My daughter is what I was thinking about. Uh, I've been associated with AYSO since 2004, and uh, that puts me almost to 20 years now. I've served over 10,000 kids, and we've been waiting all those years for additional field space. Uh, I was a participant in that 2015 study that the previous gentleman has spoken about, and now we're seven, eight years uh, waiting still for this project to come to fruition. Uh, the, the public sentiment is, it's, it's good for everything. You, you've heard it today, not just from me, but from others that have called in today. Uh, I, uh, I can't say enough about the project uh, and our kids need it. With COVID, it really, it was a gut punch to everybody, adults and children. We absolutely need something like this uh, we got to get out. All right, Thank Gregory, you. you're out of time. Thank you for your call. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Thank you. My name is Scott Dillinger. I live in the Playa Del Rey community, and I'm the former Del Rey Neighborhood Council President. I started my career in 89, serving the city of LA, and I know full well how important it is for projects like this. Caller, can you just before the community. decide which item you'd like to speak on? Oh, item number one. Thank you very All much. All right, you've got you've got you've got one minute, Scott. Thank you very much. Absolutely, yes. Well, as a as a consultant to the city of LA, a career um, employee of the city of LA, and a Delray neighborhood council president past who served the city of LA, I can recognize how important it is for opportunities like this to provide these recreational opportunities for youth 
and the community as a whole. And in the times of ever increasing budget challenges, I completely and wholeheartedly support this as a steward of the city of LA and as a member of the community over here. It has my complete endorsement. I urge you to support this, this opportunity before us. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. And remember to press star six to unmute. Hi there, my name is Nicole Gibson. Can you hear me? We can. Hi, I am actually calling to speak on item number one. You have one minute, go ahead. Hi there, I am a 13 year Westchester uh, resident as well as a uh, charter school provider um, to communities in the South LA and Westchester areas. And uh, a project like this would mean so much to the communities that it will serve. And so I just wanna lend my full support to Lulu's place and say that I hope that uh, the council will consider and uh, make this thing come to life. Thank you for the call, Ms. Gibson. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Sybil Smith, and I'd like to speak on item number one, Lulu's place. You have one minute, go ahead. Thank you. I'm Sybil Smith, Executive Director of the Sloan Stevens Foundation. Our mission is to use tennis and education to change the narrative of poverty, health inequity, and educational underdevelopment. We currently provide tennis and education in 21 schools in Compton Unified and many other programs throughout Los Angeles and the country. With Lulu's Place, our mission is strengthened. The Los Angeles community is enriched and opportunities for Southern California youth increase exponentially. The programs that will be offered at Lulu's Place truly work, and I strongly urge you to support Lulu's Place. Thanks. Thank you for your call, Ms. Smith. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Reminder to press star six on mute. Hi, my name is Scott Walter, and I'm here to speak about item number one. All right, Todd, you have one minute. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Um, I'm here to express the strongest possible support for the proposed Lulu's Place in Westchester. Um, as a homeowner and resident of Westchester and a parent of a 10-year-old boy, I'm very excited by the possibility such an amazing educational and recreational facility could be realized in our neighborhood. Um, Westchester is a, a growing community with a new generation of young families, many of whom have children who would certainly benefit from the programs, the recreational opportunities, and facilities that the project will provide. Um, to learn that the facility is not fully, I'm sorry, to learn that the facility is fully financed by private donation makes this really a no-brainer and a major win-win for the Westchester community and the city of Los Angeles. Um, I was surprised to hear that not all city leaders have fully supported this project, given the obvious community benefits and the lack of cost of city and its consistency with the city council approved LAX specific plan. So simply put, Lulu's Todd, Place I'm is so a sorry. generation. Todd, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you're yeah. out of time. We have to move on to the next caller. Thank you for your comments. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you would like to speak on. My name is Kyle Hunsberger, item number one. All right, Kyle, you have one minute, go ahead. Good afternoon, my name is Kyle Hunsberger and I'm a resident of Playa Vista, but even more relevantly, I'm the principal of Katherine Johnson STEM Academy, an LAUSD middle school located here on the campus of Westchester High School in Council District 11 within walking distance of the proposed location for Lulu's Place. Today, I fully support and urge council members to approve Lulu's Place. As a local principal, I'm always looking for opportunities that will benefit the academic, social, emotional, and health aspects of my students' lives, and the proposed development of Lulu's Place will provide for exactly this. Rarely does such an opportunity occur to so directly and profoundly impact the lives of so many young people that we dare not miss it. In closing, I'd once again recommend the council to approve Lulu's Place, and I invite any of our council members to come and visit us here at Katherine Johnson STEM and meet some of the students and families whom Lulu's Place will no doubt impact. Thank you so much. Kyle, thank you for your comments. I'd love to come visit sometime. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you would like to speak on. Hello. 
Hi, my name's Pam Shriver. Can you hear me? I, we can't hear you, Pam. What item would you like to speak on? I, I'd like to speak on item number one, Lulu's Place. All right, you have one minute. Go ahead. I've been a lifelong participant in all sports. I was lucky enough to have enough skill and opportunity to play professional tennis for 19 years. Since I retired, I've been trying to help raise money and funds and opportunity for those who didn't have the same access that I have and that my kids have had. I'm also um, an AYSO, retired AYSO ref. I just know this project would mean the world of difference to the Westchester community and the communities that surround it. We don't have enough open space. We need sports and competitive activities and activities away from screens to help our kids grow and a shared opportunity for parents to share this amazing site with their kids. Thank you. All right, thank you, Pam. Next thank caller, you. please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Hi, Allison Holdorf, Paul Hill, LAUSD board member, Nick Melvoin, district director, and I'd love to speak on item one. All right, Allison, you have one minute. Go ahead. Thank you, Councilwoman Park and honorable committee members. Um, the board member has sent in a letter strongly advocating that this committee approve Lulu's place. We've been working on this since early 2021, and the heart and soul of this project is to the benefit of Playa del Rey and Westchester both for athletics and for academics, and we are thrilled. I just wanna remind you the inspiration for Lulu's Place came shortly after the passing of Doug Kimmelman's wife, Carol, her nickname's Lulu, and she served for many years as an LAUSD elementary school teacher who appreciated the challenges that our children face in pursuing their dreams. That's one, Doug Kimmelman and his four children and his team have done an amazing job creating state-of-the-art athletics for us, but also college support and athletic support and health, et cetera. So it's phenomenal. The other piece of this is Westchester and Playa del Rey are park poor. We know that because at LAUSD, we actually opened one of our elementary schools to be a school park in the fall. Allison, I hate to cut you off. Permit. No problem, thank you. <laughs> but you're out of time. Thank you for your remarks. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hello, I'm Rebecca Cunningham. Uh, item, uh, agenda, <laughs> agenda item number one. You've got one minute. Go ahead, Rebecca. Thank you. Since 2003, I've lived in Westchester. I'm in the two residential blocks that exist between the back gates of LMU and LA um, City's Westchester Park. I have two LAUSD daughters, sixth grade and 10th grade who basically grown up playing Little League uh, softball and AYS soccer at Carl Nielsen Park, which is owned by LAWA. We have 1,300 kids who play in our local AYSL. They come from inside and outside of Westchester. We simply do not have enough field space. I am enthusiastically over the moon excited about Lulu's Place if it includes soccer fields that can be realistically used to alleviate AYS's field shortage. This means reasonable prices, reasonable hours, if we make the money, to, the rental fees too high, then only the wealthy travel clubs will be able to afford it. Not your local. Everyone is invited. Everyone plays AYS or rec sports. We, you, the committee, and we, the community, have the opportunity to develop some of the last bits of land in Westchester, and it could be a gem in our community. We're the perfect location, and this has the potential to be a win-win for all. Thank you all for right, your time. Rebecca, and that's Rebecca you're happen. out of time. Thank you for your call. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. My name is Steve Donnell, item number one. Steve, you have one minute, go ahead. Hi, I'm the former chair of the Planning and Land Use Committee of the uh, Local Neighborhood Council. I fully support the project. The Lulu's Place uh, project will offer academic enrichment and support, college and career preparedness, athletics and fitness programs, health and wellness programs. Lulu's Place will also partner with local nonprofit organizations to, to deliver community serving programs and services at its facilities. This will be a gem to the local community and will be absolutely uh, fantastic for all served. Thank you very much. All right, Steve, thank you. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you would like to speak on. All right, one minute of general public comment. All right, you have one minute. Go ahead. What's your name? Andrew. 
All right, Andrew, you have a minute. Go ahead. All right. So we see that this um city it doesn't sit this is like the travel committee or whatever. But you know, you look at and tourism, but you know, you look at what the city's doing and you wonder whether the city whether um tourists are actually being attracted to the city because you see all the um fascism and racism in the city government, um, including the chair of this committee, um Officer Tracy. Um, so yeah, um, you might want to fix city government, abolish the police, abolish 4118. Speaker, and, you know, speaker, speaker, I'm sorry, this is city attorney's office. I'm just, um, just wanted a clarification. Are you speaking on an agenda item or are you just making a general public comment? I'm sorry, I didn't get that at the beginning. General comment. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Go ahead and continue. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, if you want to start, um, actually attracting some tourists maybe you can start by um stopping the enabling of kdl and voting no on his items on friday all right thanks andrew next caller please caller please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on my name is stephanie i'm speaking on item number one so this all, right. Place. all right stephanie you have a minute go ahead Thank you. Uh, so I live in Playa del Rey in the area immediately adjacent to the proposed project. This particular area of Playa del Rey is primarily multifamily homes. We are apartments and condos, and we do not have backyards like a single family home for our children. I'm a mother to a four-year-old son, and the gift that Lulu's Place wants to bring the hundreds of families that are in my part of the neighborhood, my own building is about 200 units, uh, is green space, sports facilities, and a playground. Uh, the proposed project is absolutely beautiful and what it means to the health and well-being of our children to be able to walk to a park uh, for those of us who are apartment dwellers. I cannot speak enough to how much that means to us. I also want to really applaud Lulu's Place for the community outreach as a resident. I feel like I've had ample opportunity to attend meetings and hearings and hear about their plans and give my feedback. And I really appreciate the effort that they've made. All right, Stephanie, thanks for the call. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Hello, my name is Eddie Ortobegi and I'd like to speak on item number one, please. Eddie, you have one minute, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I am a 40 year resident of uh, Westchester. My parents moved here a long time ago. I stayed. I went to all the local schools. I graduated from LMU and I just love this community and something like Lulu's Place is a gift. It's something we all would use, uh, you know, in its entirety. As everybody stated, we have, you know, families that need the space. We have families that are need to meet each other. We have all these different schools, but sometimes these families don't get to interact with each other. I feel like something like this would bring the community together, bring kids together. I have four kids myself, and I find them wanting to go to other local areas outside of our general you know, local area to go and hang out with friends. And I feel like this would be something perfect where we can use it for ourselves instead of going to you know, adjacent communities um, I feel you right, know, Eddie, everything I about this. I hate to interrupt you, perfect. Eddie, but you're out of time. We have to move on. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you would like to speak on. Reminder to press star six to unmute. Hello. Hi, can you state your name and what items you'd like to speak on, please? Hi, I'm calling about item number one, Lulu's Place. All right, what's your name? Hi, my name is Danny Griffin, and I'm in a unique situation because I'm a former student at Kentwood Elementary in Westchester. All right, you have one minute, go ahead. Over, um, I'm in a unique situation. I'm a former student at Kentwood Elementary as well as uh, Overwrite Middle School, but I lived and grew up in South Los Angeles, right down the street from Raymond Avenue Elementary. So that was my home elementary. So uh, Kentwood gave me an opportunity to be around diversity, cultural diversity. And I think Lulu's Place would do that as well. I'm a, currently a teacher and I'm a former coach at the University of UConn and Cal State Northridge. 
And I think this project would not only develop student athletes, but students in general, holistically, emotionally, physically, and mentally, and athletically. And it's a must needed project to bring our communities together. Danny, thank you for your comments. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Hello, my name is Julie Ross and I'm speaking on agenda item one. Hi, Julie, you have one minute, go ahead. Thank you, I'm speaking on behalf of the Neighborhood Council. All right, you have one minute on item one. Yes, on November 1st, the Neighborhood Council issued a letter to um, LAWA uh, urging them to hold open and public engagement with the community on the new proposed use for the Northside Development Project prior to signing a lease with Kimbledon Foundation and prior to bringing the new project to BOAC. Additionally, the board voted to support the joint participation of both the Airport Relations Committee and the Planning and Land Use Committee in anticipation of ongoing open committee meetings with LAWA and Lulu's place regarding their newly proposed use for the open space. We look forward to working with them. We are, we are very pleased that they have um, come back to the community and are now looking just beyond those interested in playing tennis or AYSO soccer and um, are willing to look at the overall impact that the project may have on the immediate surrounding community and ways that they can mitigate that. Thank you. Thank you for your call, Julie. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. This is the Andy Siwak. Andy, which, com which item would you like to speak on? Uh, item number one, sorry. Uh, all right, you have one minute, go ahead. Yeah, my name is Andy Siwak. I live in Westchester. I'm on the board of Westchester Little League. Just a little bit about Westchester. You know, this community was built very quickly in the 1940s with bean fields in 1940. And by 1950, there were tens of thousands of people living here and no parks were basically built north of Manchester, west of 405, south of Howard Hughes and east of Lincoln. There is no major park in the residential neighborhoods. And it got so bad, I was able to raise $20,000 to open up open magnet charter school uh, to the public um, from Saturdays from 10 to four. And it's been, a huge amount of support for it. Lots of kids go every weekend. This is a super park starved community. Lulu's Place is really, really a vital place to, to have this to happen. Uh, we really need the park space. All these parents are taking their kids to Culver City and El Segundo all over. And we really, really need the park space uh, to have recreation space for all users everywhere. Um, I just like to have the, the city, you know, reach out to other people besides the neighborhood council in Westchester. Reach out Andy, to the I'm so sorry well. you're out of time. I hate to cut you off, but we have to move on. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Anna Spearman. I'd like to speak on item one. All right, you have one minute. Go ahead, Anna. Hi, I'm a Westchester resident and a former tennis student of the Pete Brown Junior Tennis Program, a program introducing and developing young tennis players. I joined the program when I was eight years old. And, and through the Pete Brown Junior Tennis Program, I attended the Nike Tennis Camp at Pepperdine University, a tennis camp at Sonoma State University, and a trip to Florida to build my tennis skills. We received monthly tennis training at Riviera Country Club, and the program provided me with USTA tournament fees to participate in various turn, uh, tennis tournaments. My tennis coach that's a part of a program also recommended I apply to Marlboro School, a very prestigious all-girls private school in Hancock Park. Lulu's Place will allow the Pete Brown Junior Tennis Program to touch additional young athletes to develop into strong tennis players. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and the items you would like to speak on. Hi, I'd like to speak on item one. What's your, name? What's your name? My name is Paula Jerez. Paula, go ahead. You have one minute. Good afternoon, Chairman. Chairwoman Park, Vice Chair Osak McCosker, and Member Soto Martinez. My name is Paula Jerez, and even though I'm the president of the Westchester Playa Neighborhood Council, I am here today representing myself and my daughter, who is an up and coming soccer star. My family wholeheartedly supports this offering by the Kimmelman family and hopes you approve this lease today 
so we may continue to design this community project and answer the many questions and concerns people have. I would like to remind everyone that the EIR approved by the City Council and our community has many safeguards in place. If this project stays within those guidelines, then it deserves and must have our collective approval. My personal experience with LAWA and Mr. Urbachi is a positive one. I consider LAWA a trusted partner and with our newly elected Councilwoman Park, I'm very confident the interests of the community will be a top priority. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you for your comments, Paula. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Hi, I'm Dr. Michelle Cooley Strickland, item number one, please. All right, Dr. Strickland, you have one minute, please. I'm a 19 year resident of Playa del Rey, parent and nine year board member of the Neighborhood Council of Westchester Playa, serving as the representative of Playa del Rey and vice president representing myself today. Playa del Rey has few benefits, but much of the inconvenience of being Lawa's neighbor, which is why I'm in full support of Lulu's place. I shared concerns about adequate parking and mitigation of noise, traffic, safety, and security noted in prior community meetings, but I've learned that the EIR will address these issues, especially if developers work with the neighborhood council. This mixed educational and recreational gift will benefit our community for generations to come. Please approve and accelerate the proj project. And I offer my assistance in any way. Thanks so much. Thank That's you for your thank you for your call. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you would like to speak on. Hi, my name is Tara Barowski. So I'd like to speak on item one. All right, you have one minute. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, Good afternoon, council members. I am a long-term Playa del Rey resident. I live down the street from the proposed Lulu's place. And I just want to echo the sentiments overwhelmingly from the community that we are in strong support of this project. I admire the work that's been done in the community to listen to our concerns and address them. I think this will be a real asset to our community. We need more recreational opportunities for our youth. Um, I love the mission of uh, the programs that are going to be provided, and I strongly urge you to fast track and support this project. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you would like to speak on. Hi, my name is Caroline Riley. Um, item one, Lulu's place. All right, you have one minute. Go ahead. Hi, I'm calling on behalf of the USTA and would like to read a letter that was submitted to the committee by tennis player and U.S. Open champion Sloan Stevens on the project. Dear hey, committee members, I'm, I'm writing to urge this committee to unequivocally support Lulu's place and its mission to combine tennis and education to create opportunities for young people in Los Angeles. I'm so thankful to have realized my dream as the 2017 U.S. Open, Open champion and for my thriving tennis career. It's led me to be passionate about creating opportunities for other young people to achieve their dreams and become their best selves. The Sloan Stevens Foundation, which I founded in 2013, strives to improve opportunities for underserved children through education, fitness, and sport. Our foundation works closely with the Compton Unified School District and Superintendent Dr. Darren Brawley to support students in 25 schools throughout Compton with both tennis coaching and academic tutoring. We provide nets, rackets, balls, and even safe footwear, removing the barriers to entry in what can be an expensive sport. We've also built and refurbished 50 tennis and mini tennis courts, giving the youth of Compton more spaces to play safely. I hate My to interrupt you and cut you off. I'm play. so sorry, but you're out of time. We have to move on. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Can you please okay. say your name? My name is. Like to speak on. Sure, Anna Carter, and I'm calling to speak on item number one. All right, Ms. Carter, you have one minute. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I am calling on behalf of Pete Brown Junior Tennis Program, and my daughter has been a member for over ten years, and we are calling to strongly support Lulu's Place. We are excited to have 
the possibility of a high quality, world class tennis facility that's safe and clean within our community. We won't have to drive over an hour uh, uh, to uh, have access to tennis courts and buildings and programs that promote physical fitness, education, character, and community. We strongly support this program. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Carter. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you would like to speak on. Hello, I'm John Sharp, and I'd like to speak on item one. John, you have one I'm a minute. 30, Go ahead. Thank you. I'm a I'm a 30-year resident of Westchester and chairman-elect of the Board of Managers of the Westchester Family YMCA, and I'm an incoming board member of the Westchester Rotary Club, and I'd like to voice my support for the planned development at Lulu's Place. I think it will be a huge gift to the community and provide a variety of opportunities for all for partnership and growth, and I urge you to support the plan and obtain full city council approval of the lease. Thank you very much. Thank you for the call. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you would like to speak on. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, can you please state your name and what items you would like to speak on? Yes, my name is Gwen Butchus and I'm calling on item one, Lulu's place. Gwen, you have one uh, minute. Go ahead. I, uh, I am the uh, co-chair of the Education Committee of the Chamber of Commerce and a member of the Play of Venice Sunrise Rotary Club and also um, a 45-year resident of Westchester Play Del Rey. We actually had a discussion at Lewis Place with all the principals of 26 schools at a meeting recently and everybody was very, very excited and looking forward to the development and progress of Lulu's Place. It will add so much to the community. And as someone said earlier, we are park poor. <laughs> we need it. It's going to offer more than just sports, a lot of academic enrichment, and it will benefit many, many people, children of all ages, and families in this community. And I urge you to support Lulu's Place. Thank you. Thanks for your comments, Gwen. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Remember to press star six to unmute. This is Denny Schneider, president of RSAC, item one. Denny, you have one minute, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my vice president adequately spoke about most of the issues that we have. I just wanna point out that the, Lulu's Place really is two projects, one on St. Bernard's campus and one on the Lawa properties. And there are some issues with the lease right now that we are concerned about that changes can be made without the public's inputs. And that was the con biggest concern that we have. I'm pleased to see that this is going forward, uh, but I do wanna make sure that we do have the, the ability to have our say, and we're working closely with Lulu's Place from this point forward. Thank you. Thanks for your comments, Denny. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Hello, my name is Doug Zwick, and I'd like to speak about item number one. Doug, you have one minute. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm one of the many residents of Manitoba Street and other streets immediately adjacent to the project, the bedroom and the home office windows facing directly onto this project. No one has conducted any outreach to this neighborhood about the Lulu project and its potential damage to our immediate neighborhood. By comparison, years of community outreach were conducted for the previous plan and there was an understanding that noise and traffic needed to be kept away from housing. For instance, all parking was planned to be east of Falmouth Street, well away from homes. Because of the addition of the huge tennis complex and educational facilities, parking has been moved to within yards of people's bedrooms. A major fully lit soccer field will be yards from dozens of condo units, similarly restrooms and kiddie playgrounds. All of these noisy elements can be moved closer to Westchester Parkway and further from homes, yet no reasonable consideration has been given to this. No previous environmental review has ever analyzed the impact of a development with such intensive use, including traffic, noise, and light pollution. 
a new one must be undertaken. No decision should be made on the lease until these issues are resolved. Doug, I hate to cut Thank you off, but you're out of time. Um, next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Reminder to press star six to unmute. Hello. Hello, could you please Hi, state your my name? name? Is... Thank you, go ahead. Sure, my name is Chris Morrow and I'd like to speak on item number one. Chris, you have one minute, go ahead. As a graduate of St. Bernard High School and a graduate of Loyola Marymount University, I'm in full support of Lulu's Place. Uh, this incredible project will be great for both St. Bernard and Westchester High School students through the various renovations and enhancements to the area and their campuses, as well as to youth throughout the region uh, with this new sports, recreation, and educational hub. So I'm in full support of these. Thank you. Thank you for your call. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Caller, you have to press star six to unmute. Uh, looks like you were unmuted, but we couldn't hear you. Uh, if you want to try pressing star six again. Unfortunately, still you are unmuted, but we cannot hear you. Right, let's move on to the next caller and see if we can come back to this one. Caller, can you please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on? Yes, my name is Paul Escala. Paul, what item, item would you one. like to speak on? Okay, you have one minute. Go ahead. Hello, council members. Uh, my name is Paul Escala. I'm the uh, senior director and superintendent of schools for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. I'm calling on behalf of the Archdiocese and Archbishop Gomez to lend our full uh, and uh, excited support for the Lulu's Place um, lease uh, with uh, LAWA. Um, uh, we uh, represent uh, St. Bernard's High School and uh, the students and families and staff um, who uh, are looking forward to uh, a neighbor that uh, aligns well with uh, our mission and vision for the education uh, and formation of youth in the Westchester and uh, Playa del Rey community. Um, we are excited about uh, the opportunity for partnership in uh, our programs uh, that can help uh, students, not just at St. Bernard's High School, uh, but at uh, all area schools, both public, uh, religious, and, uh, and charter. Uh, this will be a force multiplier for the community of Westchester uh, and for the, uh, the future. Uh, this Mr. Estella, region. I'm sorry and to interrupt you, thank you, but you're out of time. Thank you. Next caller, please. Caller, please state your name and what items you'd like to speak on. Caller, you need to press star six to unmute. Seems like they, we can, um, you are muted, but we cannot hear you. So unless you're able to correct that, we'll have to move on. Can you hear me now? We yes. can, yes. Can you state your name and the items you'd like to speak on, please? Yes, my name is Johnny Rains, and I'd like to speak on item one. Okay, Johnny, you have one minute. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, basically, I just want to echo all of the positive comments that have been made that have been made with regard to Lulu's place. I think there's no better tool to use to assist youth. I'm an educator, mentor, and youth advocate, a lifetime resident of the city of Los Angeles. And I think this is just another perfect opportunity to give youth a leg up on, on life. Athletics and academics coming together to support the youth of the community. I wholeheartedly urge support of Lulu's place. Thank you for the call, Johnny. Is there are there any more callers? We have one more caller. So caller, if you could please state your name and what items you would like to speak on. 
Melina Brown of Sugarman Group, item number one. All right, Melina, you have one minute. Go ahead. So I'm a Westchester resident and a proud member of the Lulu's Place project team. It's, it's amusing that I, I'm, I think I'm your last caller because I was calling to make sure you knew that we had support from hundreds of families. Oh, no. like, there you are. Melina, you broke up for a minute. Go ahead. Sure thing. I was calling mostly to make sure that this committee knew that we had support from hundreds of families from Westchester and Playa del Rey and the surrounding areas, education champions like LAUSD board member Nick Melvoin, nonprofits like the YMCA and ASO, Supervisor Holly Mitchell, members of the Neighborhood Council of Westchester Playa, the LA84 Foundation, tennis greats like Pram Shriver and Chris Everett, but I guess they all called in and beat me to the punch. So I just want to echo their support as a, frankly, as a resident, that Lulu's Place will be transformational and give kids access to opportunities and support that far go beyond what they currently receive in the classroom, all for free and low cost. Thank you for helping make this vision a reality. Appreciate it. All right, Melina, thanks for your call and for being patient through the end of the queue. I think we might have one more caller. Yes, I believe so. Caller, if you could state your name and what items you would like to speak on. Hello there. Can you hear me? We can. Yeah. Great, great. Marty Wood, Executive Director of the Pete Brown Jr. Tennis Program in L.A. Um, Pete Brown was big for me uh, when I was growing up. I grew up fatherless in that community. And one day, me and my two siblings were walking to a swimming hole and that day, the tennis courts were decorated with balloons, banners, and many kids playing amongst the court. I hear this voice uh, radiate through the, through the park. Hey, kids, do you want to learn the sport of tennis? Of course, Pete, there was Pete Brown with a brand new tennis racket, holding, holding up the brand new tennis racket. We ran over, signed up. Uh, Pete Brown, unfortunately, passed away in 2009. Pete Brown was a coach, not only a coach, a mentor and a father figure to me. He had me on college campuses, tutoring, uh, ex kids coming back and tutoring us. So I'm a big advocate of number one, Lulu's project, because uh, I like to keep Pete Brown's uh, legacy alive. And this Lulu project would do that and even more. So thanks for hearing me, guys. All right. Thank you for your call, Marty. Are there any final callers in the queue? There are no more callers. All right. Well, that will conclude our uh, public comment segment. And I just want to note for the record that that was 46 calls. So thank you to every member of the public who took time to appear before us today and to provide your comments. We appreciate that. So we will go ahead and move on with the business of the committee at this point. Um, unless there are any objections from my colleagues, I would like to move items three to eight on consent. Any objections, Council Member McCosker? No objection. Any objections, Council Member Soto Martinez? None, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Park? Yes. McCosker? Yes. Soto Martinez? Yes. Three eyes and items three to eight are approved. Okay. All right. So then um, I would like to begin with item number two. Mr. Clerk, could you please read the item for us? Item number two, Board of Airport Commissioners report relative to approving the second amendment to contract DA 5437 with Cone Inc. to extend the term through September 16th, 2023 and increase the contract authority by $6,240,000 dollars covering full service elevator escalator moving walkway maintenance repair and related services at the los angeles international airport and van nuys airport and categorical exemption from the california environmental quality act pursuant to article 3 class 132 of the los angeles city CEQA guidelines all right thank you um do we have any representatives from lawa here who can give us a report on this item uh, yes, uh, Chairman Park, this is Justin Urbachi. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Los Angeles World Airports. Um, and we have Mike Christensen, who is our Chief Operations and Maintenance Officer, who's uh, on the call to address this particular item. All right, thank you, Mr. Urbachi. Mr. Christensen, welcome. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you, Council Members, and uh, good afternoon. Uh, before you is a request to approve the Second Amendment with Kone Incorporated to add six $2 million for a total contract value of about 
$5.9 million and also add six months of term for a total term of three years and six months. Now, Kone performs maintenance and repairs for the 441 escalators, elevators, and moving walkways at LAX, which incidentally will be increasing to about 506 in the next couple of years. The purpose of this amendment is to add contract authority to meet the current demand for maintenance and repairs, and also to add enough time to the term of the agreement so that we can complete the ongoing process to procure a new contract, which is in process right now. Now, just as a little bit of background, maintenance work uh, on these elevators, escalators, and moving walkways is performed by both LAWA employees who are part of our elevator shop, currently staffed at 35 with about seven vacancies, augmented by contractor employees. Also, as background, Kone, along with LAWA's employees, are all represented by Local 18 of the International Union of Elevator Constructors. Now, it's LAWA's desire to continue to, to, to try to perform as much work as possible with our own employees. This is, uh, is an ongoing function. When we do work with our own employees, we're actually paying less than with a contractor. However, we try mightily to hire, but we are challenged with getting enough people. We have, uh, again, 35 people in our shop. We've gone to extraordinary measures at one point, even re reaching out to over a thousand elevator mechanics licensed to work in LA and offering them jobs um, without a lot of work. So as we continue to um, procure this contract, and I'm sure we'll be back uh, in front of you on some of these issues, we're all ears on ways we can engage and ways we can get more city employees working in the shop. But until we do that, we will need to have some contractor uh, uh, assistance to, uh, to keep our elevation escalators working. Um, I'm joined on the call with our deputy executive director of maintenance, uh, Rick Connolly, and we're glad to answer any questions you might have. All right, Mr. Christensen, thank you. Mr. Connolly, thank you for being here as well. Um, I just have a quick question. Uh, your report mentions that LAWA is working on an RFP for a full conveyance maintenance contract. Can you tell us what the status is of that contract award? Um, perhaps Mr. Connolly can do that uh, if you uh, are able to unmute there, Rick. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Um, actually, we will be interviewing the proposers next week. Wednesday of next week, we'll be interviewing, uh, I believe, five potential candidates for this work. Okay. All right, thank you for that update. Uh, colleagues, are there any questions? I, I have a, a couple, uh, Madam Chair. All right, go ahead. Um, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Christensen, for that brief explanation. Happy to hear that uh, both uh, workers are covered by a CBA. Uh, do you know if there's any any labor disputes happening right now with with any of any uh, with the with the contractor with with Coney? Uh, not that I'm aware of, uh, Councilmember Soto Martinez. Uh, we stay pretty close to them, and we're not aware of any major issues. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you, Councilmember McCosker. Any questions? No, I'm good. I appreciate those questions and responses. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you, colleagues. I would like to move that we approve item two. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Mark? Yes. McOsker? Yes. Soto Martinez? Yes. Three eyes, and the item has been approved. Great. So that will bring us to item number one. Mr. Clerk, if you could please read the item for us. Item number one, Board of Airport Commissioner's report relative to approve, approving the lease with Lulu's place for a term of up to 50 years for potential development of open space and recreational facilities in a portion of the Los Angeles International Airport, Northside Campus Areas 1 and 2A, and determination of no further review under the California Environmental Quality Act, pursuant to Public Resources Code Section 21166 and CEQA Guideline 1562. All right. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. So before I introduce our presenters on this item, I want members of the public to know that they can actually view this presentation on the city's channel five, sorry, channel 35 station or on my Facebook page, Councilwoman Tracy Park. 
Um, projects like the one before us do require transparency and community engagement. And I'm thankful to our partners at Channel 35 and the city's ITA department for helping us achieve this goal. With that, I would like to welcome uh, Justin Urbachi, our Chief Executive Officer at Los Angeles World Airports, as well as Samantha Bricker, Chief Sustainability and Revenue Management Officer for LAWA, to present on this item. Mr. Urbachi and Ms. Bricker, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Chair Park and Council members. Um, before today is a request to approve a proposal, a proposed lease with Lulu's Place, uh, which is a California nonprofit public uh, benefit corporation for the potential development of a, a sports and recreational facility in the area just north of LAX and Westchester Parkway in the uh, area we call the Northside uh, Campus. Uh, the proposed lease really presents um, a rare and unique opportunity to bring significant community benefit to the area and to the surrounding communities, and indeed to the city of Los Angeles. And the Kimmelman Foundation, along with substantial support from several other leading institutions are proposing to invest significant amount of money to create really a unique community recreational and sports and athletic space for youth and the residents of the city of Los Angeles. This item was heard and approved by our uh, airport board of, uh, of our board of airport commissioners on December 1st, uh, 2022. And granting of the lease really is only the first step in the process, further community outreach and proof of compliance with the LAX specific plan still needs to be done as part of the process. Uh, but we believe this is a tremendous community benefit and both a meaningful and impactful allowable use of the, uh, the airport area north of, of LAX. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll pass it over to Samantha Bricker, who will uh, walk through some additional details around this uh, tremendous project. Thank you, Mr. Abachi. Thank you, Justin. Uh, good afternoon, uh, council members. Pleased to be here. Uh, we have a brief presentation uh, that will go a little bit into some of the background. Um, as one of the speakers mentioned, uh, this process has been going on for quite some time. and uh, we started um, in 2010 and actually even a little bit before then on the community planning and public outreach uh, for what to be done on the north side. And the whole north side is about 350 acres. Um, and uh, you'll see in a little bit that we have um, allocated different uses and land uses uh, throughout the north side. Um, we did do an environmental uh, impact report for this um, project. Um, we started in 2012. We had very extensive uh, community outreach as part of that EIR, and a final EIR uh, was certified by uh, the Board of Airport Commissioners. At the same time, we also uh, did an amended LAX specific plan um, to update the LAX north side. The specific plan really lays out uh, the land uses that are allowed in the north side. And we also adopted north side design guidelines, which are really important because they really uh, address a lot of the issues that you heard from some of the speakers, things like lighting and noise. Uh, the, any project that gets developed in the north side has to abide by these design guidelines. We also held uh, community outreach on the open space portion specifically in 2019, and we issued a request for proposals for the bow tie parcel, and I'll talk about that in a minute on the next slide, please. So um, as you can see in this color-coded map, uh, the LAX North side um, really is uh, quite extensive, 350 acres. What we're talking about here today is um, on the left side of the screen where it says area one and area two A, and we'll get into that in a, in a minute, um, but wanted to just talk again about the EIR. Um, the EIR that was uh, developed uh, and approved by the city council evaluated the land uses and potential development in all areas of the LAX North Side. And it was really intended to be almost an umbrella um, of allowable uses. And we looked at every resource area um, that you would typically study in an EIR, everything from traffic and transportation to noise and air quality. And we developed mitigation measures uh, that addressed any potential impacts. And the mitigation measures and project design features are over 100 for this particular project. 
meaning that projects uh, that get developed in the north side have to abide by those mitigation measures. Um, we also addressed um, issues that were raised by the community in their public comments as part of the EIR. And again, we did extensive outreach uh, with more than 50 meetings and workshops and events. Again, uh, the EIR and the specific plan and guidelines were approved by both the Board of Airport Commissioners and the City Council. Next slide, please. Just to go a little bit more into detail on the specific plan, uh, the, spe the specific plan uh, went through every area of that color-coded map and developed allowable uses. And you can see here um, in the red circle, we're looking at areas 1 and 2A. And um, some of the allowable uses are things like athletic fields, athletic courts, uh, shade structures, restrooms, a dog park, uh, stormwater treatment facilities, uh, utilities, all of these are allowable uses in those particular areas. We also um, have design guidelines that really go into um, detail about the urban design, the architecture, um, landscape materials and palette, um, pedestrian uh, infrastructure, fencing, signage, all of those are governed by the design guidelines. So any project that gets developed has to abide by the EIR, the specific plan, and the design guidelines. Next slide, please. In uh, 2021, we issued a request for proposals for the bow tie. And the bow tie is just uh, to the east of the two areas I mentioned at the beginning, area 2A and area 1. And I bring this up because uh, we went out for um, this large uh, development. Um, and uh, one of the requirements is that the developer was required to contribute $4.2 million towards the development of active recreational uses. What you're gonna see here today as part of this lease is the developer is contributing a minimum of $65 million. So um, when we uh, went out with the RFP, um, we thought that it was going to be necessary to go out with this large project in order to get a developer to invest in the open space and recreation. But what happened was we were not able to come to a deal with a developer on the large bow tie parcel. However, the Kimmelman group was part of that team that was interested in developing this. And they came to us afterwards when we couldn't make a deal and said, you know, what? we still want to invest in this community and we still wanna move forward with the open space part, even separate from this commercial development. And we're not gonna just contribute $4.2 million, we're gonna contribute a minimum of $65 million. So that's what led us uh, to start talking to the Kimmelman Group directly and to try to work out um, a deal um, that was memorialized in the lease that we approved at the Board of Airport Commissioners in December. Next slide, please. So this is a conceptual site plan of what will be built on Lawa property. And back to that little coded, that color coded map of area 2A and area one, this is a more in-depth look at what's going to be contemplated here. And uh, as you can see, um, and for all the folks who were uh, soccer uh, aficionados on the call, there are several um, soccer fields and multi-purpose fields that are being built as part of this development. Um, there is going to be a children's playground. Um, when we went out with outreach, we were um, asked to include pickleball. So we have included pickleball as part of this development. Um, we have tennis courts um, in partnership with USTA and you heard many representatives from USTA. Um, and really something for everybody um, as part of this development. And again, way beyond the $4.2 million that we um, had hoped for, um, this $65 million investment in the community um, brings all of these amenities, not only for construction, um, but for operations for the life of the lease as well. Next slide, please. Um, when we started talking to uh, the Kimmelman team uh, last spring, um, since last June, um, we have uh, gone out to um, dozens of groups um, and had um, contact with hundreds of residents, um, hundreds of people in the community, 
um, to share information about the project. The Kimmelman team has done an amazing job reaching out um, to all aspects of the community, addressing concerns, answering questions. Um, we held a, a town meeting um, in October where um, we answered questions uh, from the community. And this is just the beginning of the process. We fully expect to continue to do outreach, um, to continue to uh, flesh out the project and address uh, concerns and comments that we've received from the community. Next slide, please. So um, some of the concerns that we've heard from the community over our um, outreach over the last um, six to eight months, um, things like lighting, um, concern that the athletic courts would um, spill over into the local neighborhoods. Again, this is where the design guidelines come in handy because there are very specific um, guidelines on how to build uh, lighting so that it prevents spillover into the community. And you can see here um, that the guidelines uh, address those issues. Parking um, has been an issue that has come up from the community. Um, the lease specifically addresses this issue and says that there must be parking on site for all operations. And that means the tournaments, um, you know, the, the um, folks who will be using it from the local community, um, there has to be ample parking on site to accommodate that use. Um, safety and security has been an issue that we've heard, and the entire space will be secured with a perimeter fence that will be locked when the facility is closed. It will not be a 24-hour facility, and uh, we've ensured in the lease that there is uh, security um, that will be further fleshed out in the operating requirements that are required to be developed as part of this project. Trip counts and transportation is always a sensitive issue near LAX. Um, the LAX specific plan compliance determination process, which I'll talk about in a minute, will include an analysis of trip counts and determine whether or not this proposal is consistent with the EIR. And the EIR um, went into um, detail about what are the uh, trip counts that are allowed for the project. Um, this compliance determination process will get into those details and will ensure that there is compliance with the EIR and the specific plan. And again, as the project moves forward with the next phases, then as Mr. Abachi said, this is the first step. Um, doing the lease then um, allows the project team to move forward with addressing these issues, um, doing additional community outreach, um, and getting more feedback, feedback and input as we move forward. Uh, next step, uh, next slide, please. So just a few uh, highlights from the lease. As I mentioned, um, the minimum capital investment is $65 million. There are no funding uh, from LAWA for construction or operations. Um, as I mentioned, there's a compliance approval process. So um, the LAX specific plan includes a compliance determination process um, that ensures that projects that are developed in the north side meet uh, the requirements of both the specific plan and the EIR. And uh, the determination um, will include the final project scope. Um, it will include um, impacts. So every resource area that is looked at in the EIR will be looked at as part of this compliance process, including trip counts. And the executive director for LAWA will make a determination of whether or not this project is in compliance. There's another check as well. The director of planning also must concur that this project is in compliance. So again, this is the first step to ensuring that all the hard work that was done on the EIR and the guidelines that this project is in compliance with that. We've also heard questions about the operational requirements, wanting to understand things like local use and access and the fees that are gonna be charged the operational requirements will have to be submitted to LAWA for approval before they can start construction. So again, we will be working closely with the community to address these concerns and make sure that they are covered in the operation requirements. One thing we typically don't do in leases is have um, an SBE goal, um, but we have included a requirement for SBE participation in this lease. We think it's really important to ensure that small businesses and local businesses participate in this project. And the lessee has agreed um, in all aspects of the project um, 
including operations, to ensure that there's SBE participation. We are getting fair market rent for this project, um, and it will be adjusted by CPI each year. At year 15 and every 10 years thereafter, there will be what we call a fair market assessment where they ensure that the fair market value at that time is reflected and that's the rent that we will get. And the term of this is um, 50 years. Next slide, please. So again, as I mentioned, this is really the first step in the process to moving forward with the project, but it's an important first step. Um, Proving this lease will allow the team to finalize the project design and their plans, including the size and scope of the recreational improvements. It will allow the lessee to complete um, the environmental analysis necessary for the compliance determination process and to submit that information to LAWA so that we can independently evaluate it and make sure it's in compliance. They will also send that information to the Department of Planning it will allow um, the lessee to hold a community open house, which we're targeting for March, to uh, answer these questions, provide information on the environmental and on the operating agreement terms and conditions. We will have follow-up stakeholder briefings, and then we will go back to the board of airport commissioners for a hearing on compliance with the specific plan and the EIR, and that is targeted for May. So we have a lot to work to do over the next few months to move the project forward, but this is a really important first step and we look forward to working with uh, your committee um, and the community to bring this um, very exciting project to fruition. And I'm happy to answer any questions. All right. Uh, thank you, Ms. Bricker and Mr. Urbachi. And to your entire staff for creating this informative and visual presentation, which I believe touches well on the benefits as well as a handful of concerns that we heard during today's public comments, um, as well as in the conversations that I've had with local residents. Uh, and for those watching or listening, I, I just want to be clear. What we're considering today is the approval of a lease that will allow for the potential recreational opportunities in areas 1 and 2A of the LAX Northside campus. Uh, we are not today approving a project, a design, or plans. Any actual project is going to have to comply with the LAX Northside EIR, as well as the specific plan and design guidelines. So with several more yards still to go ahead of us, but a very ambitious timeline, I do want to begin by asking about opportunities for further community engagement and oversight. And I appreciate what I've heard so far about your commitment in that respect. Um, so my first question is, once the city council approves the lease, how do you plan to continue to engage with the community, especially the abutting neighbors and the HOAs, other community organizations, as well as the local neighborhood council? Uh, and then separately, which actions going forward require further approval by the Board of Airport Commissioners? So um, we're very committed uh, to working uh, closely with the community. Um, the Kimmelman team has really done an amazing job uh, reaching out to the community. Anyone who has wanted a briefing, they have been willing to give a briefing, whether it's you know at night, on the weekends, um, they've gone to farmers markets, um, town halls. So um, I, I think all of that will continue and we hope that it will continue. Um, I think in terms of next steps, uh, we really want them to submit uh, a project definition and description. We'd like to understand the mitigation measures. We'd like to understand uh, their compliance uh, with the environmental. Uh, we want a chance to review that and have discussions with it and make sure that we don't see any issues. Um, and we wanna make sure that the concerns we've heard from the community are addressed from a technical point of view um, and the compliance with the environmental. I would say on a positive, um, the folks who designed uh, the, the design guidelines is uh, Rios Architecture Group. 
um, it's the same group that's actually designing this project. So they are intimately familiar with um, all the requirements that go into the design guidelines. Um, they have done extensive community outreach, um, and they have been uh, more than willing uh, to really, you know, take input um, and, and address those concerns. Um, so I think once we get that information, um, I think then that's a very good time to go back out to the community um, and have almost an open house with stations so that people can come and really get their concerns uh, addressed. If they want to talk about um, the design, you know, transportation, where the parking is located, what the fencing looks like, what the landscaping looks like, all of those, um, we think that's a great opportunity um, to bring people together, and we're hoping to do that in person. Um, we also um, will continue to work closely with the neighborhood council um, and, and brief them. Um, and again, you know, I think the, the team has shown that they're willing to you know, um, really go out and brief whoever is interested, um, answer their questions, um, and take that into account. Um, so that will happen over the next few months. Um, we're, again, we're targeting coming back to the Board of Airport Commissioners um, for that executive director compliance determination in May. And that would be another opportunity for a public hearing. And that's where um, all of that information on um, the EIR compliance, on the specific plan compliance would be discussed. Um, and then the Board of Airport Commissioners would have to agree that the project was in compliance or not. And, um, and that would be, again, an opportunity for public comment and input. Um, but this is, um, you know, something that we want the community to be proud of. We want the community to be supportive. Um, you know, this is this is for the community, and so we want to continue to have that dialogue um, and have that communication with them. And we fully anticipate um, having as many briefings as possible in order to make that happen. All right. Well, thank you for that, and I do appreciate your willingness to commit to robust and extensive ongoing community engagement. Uh, another question for you. Um, I appreciate that this is an important asset for the local community. So my question relates to the local community's ability to access um, this proposed development. Can you talk to us a little bit about how LAWA plans to prioritize community access, um, especially from adjacent schools and the local neighborhoods in connection with approving the operational agreement? So, for example, I understand there's going to be fees for community recreational programs, um, and you're going to have to ensure some cost recovery, but does can LAWA ensure that nearby residents who want to recreate can use these facilities at no or low charge? Yeah, that's a great question. We actually wrote very specific language in the lease um, that talked about the user fees. And basically, they have to be commensurate with um, fees that are charged by similar facilities. So, you know, they can't charge $100 for an hour of tennis. It has to be commensurate with um, similar recreational facilities in the area. Uh, we also have the ability to um, not approve the operating requirements, um, which is something they need to submit again before they even start construction. So we will um, have them uh, provide information on access, on user fees, um, and um, and how that'll work in terms of with their partners. So for example, um, and, and the partners may be St. B's, they may be LAUSD, they may be USTA. There are a lot of different partners who are part of this. So they're gonna have to address all of that. How, um, how local school kids will, will access the facility, um, how uh, community members will access the facility. Um, certainly on area one, um, that is uh, really designed um, for the local community in mind. You have the soccer fields, you have a children's playground, you have a dog park. Um, all of that is certainly uh, designed um, for access from the local community. And the tennis courts are um, certainly part of uh, access for the local community, as well as you know, their partnership with USTA, 
and working with LAUSD and other adjacent schools on how to best access um, those facilities. And you heard from you know, many of the speakers that this you know, really provides an opportunity for school kids who may not have them at their schools um, and allows them uh, to access these facilities as well. Okay, so just to confirm, I think what I heard you say that with respect to area one, the local communities, for example, Westchester and Playa del Rey will, you know, have priority in terms of access. Is that right? I, I think that is definitely the assumption because those are really designed uh, for local access in mind. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's not anticipated um, that that will be part of USTA, for example. So, um, you know, we will flesh all of that out as part of the operating requirements, um, but believe that um, really should be a, a high priority for community access. Okay, all right, well, thank you for that. Um, so moving on to operations and specifically subleasing, how is LAWA going to ensure that the subleases comply with the goals of the site and who has authority to review and approve subleases beyond the list of participants, which is set forth in, I think it's section 27.3 of the draft lease. So um, typically we have flow down provisions in all of our contracts and leases. So anything that is required uh, by the main uh, developer um, is required by the sub lessees as well. So for example, things like um, living wage, uh, for example, which is very important to LAWA, um, is part of the agreement um, and would be a flow down provision as well. So I think those things are very important. Um, in terms of uh, partnerships, I think we would anticipate um, having uh, the ability to review and approve um, those, um, probably as part of the operating requirements um, where they detail out a usage um, and who will be participating um, on site. Um, you know, we have insurance requirements, of course, and all of that, but we want to make sure that anyone who is, you know, participating on our property is following our rules and the provisions in the lease. All right. Um, thank you for that. Um, I also just wanted to note that I appreciate your comments during the presentation. Um, about traffic, parking, noise, lighting, and some other quality of life issues. Um, if during this process there are impacts that are identified that exceed the previous EIR, what's our recourse? So, um, you know, it's something that we've talked about with the developer. And um, if they, uh, if there are new uh, significant impacts, that are created by their project. Um, they would either have to reduce them um, by mitigating them um, if they could do so, um, or it could trigger a supplemental EIR if they're not able to do so. Um, obviously the goal um, is to keep this within the confines of the umbrella of the EIR and what was already approved and not start the process over but that really is the check for them. So, um, you know, if they go outside of those boundaries um, and they create new impacts, um, they would either have to find a way to mitigate them um, and, uh, you know, either via addendum to the EIR um, or it could trigger a supplemental. And that's really the check that, um, that we have to make sure that they're staying within the confines of that document. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Just a couple more and then I'll wrap up okay. and open the floor to my colleagues. Um, so in just thinking sort of about the big picture here, um, if the development of these open and recreational spaces move forward, um, how, how might that impact potential development of the remainder of the North Side campus, if at all? We actually think it'll have a benefit on the um, remainder of the campus, in all honesty. One of the things that um, was concerning um, was that because um, the open space doesn't generate a lot of revenue um, and it's so extensive, that um, having that, as you saw, as part of the bow tie um, was a very significant uh, piece of land that wasn't generating revenue. And um, by dividing it and, and putting it aside and having it separate 
Um, I think it allows us more flexibility um, for development of the rest of the bow tie. I think it makes it more attractive to developers. Um, I think that um, you know we might get um, more interested bidders. So we actually think this is an overall benefit to the Northside campus. All right, one, one more. Um, and I, and just sort of thinking about the project generally and some additional benefits that we really haven't talked about yet, um, maybe you could quantify to us um, you know, jobs, revenue, events, tourism, and some of those other um, impacts and opportunities that this proposed project could have for the community. So, I mean, besides the obvious benefits, um, one, you know, this land has been vacant. So um, getting an active use on the land um, does generate revenue for LAWA, but it does generate um, jobs. Um, it generates um, certainly opportunities um, for small businesses, um, you know, not only um, in the design and construction, but operations um, as well. I mean, that's a 50 year um, commitment um, to, to, um, to small business participation, um, which generates um, revenue for our small businesses as well as jobs. So I think there's a benefit there. You know, LA 84, as you heard, um, is one of the um, supporters. Um, I think people are really seeing the nexus with um, elite uh, athletic uh, facilities. Um, and really, um, in all honesty, and I think it goes overlooked, we have 50,000 employees at LAX and we don't have open space here. And I think it's a huge benefit for um, our employees as well as the community um, to have, um, you know, a place to go. Um, and so I think that there's, you know, a huge community benefit, but a, a bigger community of, of the LAX community as well. So um, I think on a whole host of levels, um, you know, this will really be beneficial, um, you know, for for the airport and for the community. Yeah, we'll have a, a, a allow a CD11 soccer match. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Justin. You got it. All right. With that, uh, I'd like to give my colleagues an opportunity to ask some questions. Council Member McCosker, anything? I just want to say that um, I really, really appreciate the presentation. I'm uh, impressed with the uh, overwhelming interest and the and the significant support. And uh, your questions, uh, Madam Chair, were excellent and very helpful. Um, I am satisfied. Thank you, Council Member McCosker. Council Member Soto Martinez, any questions? Uh, no questions. I, I do want to echo uh, what uh, my colleague, Council Member McCosker, and, and your questions, Madam Chair. But I do want to just add uh, I'm not sure if the Kimmelman family is on here, but uh, I want to express to them you know, what an amazing way to, to honor someone's legacy. Uh, you know, we know that when people pass away, it's very difficult. Um, but to turn, uh, you know, this difficult thing into something just this wonderful and beautiful. I, I just want to thank them for everything they put into it. Got one thing. I do want CD15 to be in that soccer tournament, okay? <laughs> yeah. Good, good luck, Tim. Uh, 13 will win this You one. got it. Go we're, we're going to invite 13 as well. <laughs> when we'll look forward to getting that set up at some point down the road. So uh, with no further um, comments or questions, um, I want to thank again uh, our representatives from LAWA for their very thoughtful presentation. I want to thank all of the members of the public who took time to call in today. I also want to thank the members of the public who took their time to submit their written comments regarding this. Um, and I want you to know that this very robust engagement is important to me as the council member for the district that will be host to this amenity if it moves forward um, and as the chair of this committee. So I think that this level of engagement really reflects the unmet um, promises and opportunities um, of the LAX Northside area and going back decades to when the airport first acquired this property. Uh, what we have before us today is truly an historic opportunity to meet this promise, as well as to take another step forward to the restoration of the LAX North Side for community use. Um, projects like the one before us are never without questions or concerns, and rightfully so. But I do believe that with appropriate guardrails, 
we can create a lasting community benefit for countless generations in Westchester and the surrounding areas while effectively addressing potential quality of life impacts. Um, I am committed to ensuring that the community is engaged at every step as this project moves forward. And that is from design and construction to its ultimate activation. Um, so with that, I would like to move to approve item one with the following additional instructions. Uh, request that Los Angeles World Airport report to the Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee within 30 days of the lease's effective date regarding the feasibility of creating a Lulu's Place Advisory Committee, which would include residents of the local neighborhood and HOAs abutting the site, in addition to other community stakeholders. Also, request that LAWA report back to the Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee within 30 days of the lease's effective date with a community outreach plan that would encompass Lulu's design compliance and construction phases. Also, prior to any project approvals by the Board of Airport Commissioners, uh, request that LAWA present to the Neighborhood Council of Westchester Playa, uh, Playa's General Board and its Planning and Land Use Committee and its Committee on Airport Relation, Relations for input, revision, and feedback. Also, for any actions oh. requiring approval or consent of the LAWA Chief Executive Officer or designee, request that LAWA, in consultation with the CD11 office, present to the Neighborhood Council of Westchester Playa's General Board, its Planning and Land Use Committee, and Air Airport Relations Committee for input, revision, and feedback. And that includes, but is not limited to, the draft operating agreement, any material changes to the operating agreement, schedule of community program fees, and subleases. Uh, request that LAWA provide quarterly updates about Lulu's Place to the Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee, including but not limited to community outreach, compliance with the LAX specific plan, the status of the operational agreement, and necessitation of any additional environmental clearance that may be required. So colleagues, if there are no objections, I would like to move to approve this item with the additional instructions that I have read into the record. Um, Mr. Clerk, if you would, please call the roll. Mark? Yes. McOsker? Yes. Soto Martinez? Yes. Three eyes, and item number one has been approved as amended. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And again, thank you uh, to everyone who participated today. Uh, Mr. Sa, do we have anything else before the committee? Desk is clear. All right. Thank you very much. This meeting is adjourned. Everyone have a great evening. Mm -hmm.